to our Good News program. We're so thankful that you tuned in. If those of you that have been following along with our lessons, you know what we are teaching now. The only hope of the world is the gospel of God's redeeming grace. Now, I'm going to be giving these out more than you have ever heard because this has to be repeated. I want every person in this universe to understand these truths. And they are the most powerful and most profound that we have ever taught. So the gospel is good news. That is that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So the crucifixion atones our sins and the resurrection eradicates our sins. That means he never remembers them no more once we have confessed our sins after being born again by the Spirit of God. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. We must believe in the virgin birth. We must believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. We must believe in the Trinity, and we must believe the Word of God. The Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And we must get back to the Word of God. And this is teaching us in these lessons that every word is pure as silver, tried in the furnace of the earth, purified seven times. That is Psalm 12, verse 6. So what do we learn in the Word of God? And there is no power that can stand against the Word of God. We have to understand these lessons on the Word of God and how important. Proverbs 21, 30. There is no wisdom, nor understanding, nor counsel against our Lord. Now, He's our Lord after we be, receive the gift. That gift we're going to find about, out about in a few minutes. And 2 Corinthians 13, 8. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth, believing the truth. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. So here we must start with the Word of God every day. It's impossible to please God. So faith has to have a foundation. And that foundation is the Word of God. And when you appropriate those by faith, you live the abundant life. I know that life. I have lived it. So here we see in John 3, 27, and you must write these scriptures down and quote them because the only way that you are going to receive the blessings from the word of God is appropriate each promise by faith and live that and not doubt in your heart. So in John 3, 27, a man can, <coughs> excuse me, receive nothing except it be given to him from heaven. We cannot receive any gift, anything, unless it's given to us from heaven. What glory this is. And then Proverbs 30, verse 5, every word of God is pure. Proverbs 30, verse 6, add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. This is God's word. So this is the most exciting thing that can happen to any person in the world. And that's why we have been studying the lessons on our inheritance. And now today, I have given to these before, but we're going to give these out until you get those hidden in your heart. Jesus Christ is God's love gift to the world. Jesus Christ is God's love gift to the world. 
This is the most important thing that anyone can ever know. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is only those things that are eternal are important. So here I see what John 3.16 means. And then, of course, Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ is what the world needs today. Now listen what happens to us that have believed. And if you haven't believed and you're not a child of God, you cannot appropriate these by faith, because you're not a child of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So it's the believers are the Father's love gift to Christ Jesus. You see, as Savior, that's, we, that's what Jesus means, Savior. And then after we're saved, He becomes our Christ, our Lord, our Master. And then everything I do has to be lived by this book, by this book. So now, you have to write these words, these verses down. I've given them to you before. John 17, verse 6, verse 7, verse 8, and verse 10. Now, I'm not going to read all of those because you need lessons to study. You must study the Word of God. You cannot live this book unless you read it every day. So here we said, verse 6, I'm going to give this one to you, and you read verse 7, verse 8, and verse 10. Jesus Christ is in the garden praying before he went to the cross. And it says in John 17, 3, This is life eternal, that we may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. So he says in verse 6, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept my word. So here we are. The believers now has been given to Christ. That's the Father's love gift to Christ Jesus. Then it is Christ now who commits the believers to the Father's... This is amazing. You've got to write these down. The Father's safekeeping. Now, you write it down, and I'll go slow. I know I talk too fast sometimes. I've already been told that. It is Christ now. We are His. God just gave us to... This, this is His love gift to His Son, Jesus Christ. So now Christ, as the Trinity is all the same, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They work equally together in everything. So I'm giving these to you because this is the last days, and you have very little time to accept this gift. It, it, tomorrow may be too late, and then the rapture takes place. And we've got everything for a believer is abundant life and victory in everything that we do. Because this book is a book of victory and grace. His grace is sufficient for everything. It is Christ now who commits the believer into the Father's hands for safekeeping so that the believer's security rests in the Father's faithfulness to His Son, Jesus Christ. Now, you see, they working together for all of this. That's what the Trinity is. There's, there can be no division in this body of believers. There can be no division in our homes. It has to be perfect unity because for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. We are the body and he is the head. He's the head of all creation because he created all things. So here we see, and now this is John 17, 11 and 12. Now listen at this. I have to give you just one of these. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in 
thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost. And I have to read verse 13. And now I come to thee, and these things I speak to the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I know this joy. You can know it too. And then 15, you don't look at the world now. The world has only sorrows. Nothing this world. He says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So here we see in verse 15 now, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. We're to hate evil. Listen, this is to be a holy life. We are to worship him in spirit and in truth. And this is true worship, worshiping him in the beauty of his holiness. Do we really know today what real worship is? It can't be apart from this book. I can't pray apart from this book. I can't do anything. But now the best things I want to give you today, the most important things I want to give you. Now that's, that's the main, main theme of these last days. But listen what he promises to you if you get, obey his word. This is in chapter 12 of John, verse 26. This, you've got to write this down, every person. And now the only, I can read it to you and then I can tell you how you can serve him. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. What are you doing to serve the Lord? You see, I, I'm out almost every day giving out tracts and telling people of God's love. And if you just pray for me, you will be rewarded for everything God does through me because that's all I do. I don't do it for money. I do it for you that you will receive the rewards, that you will be in heaven. And all of my little children that I've taught and every person, that's going to be the greatest reunion when we are all together in the clouds to meet him there in the rapture. This is what this is all about. And then another Bible verse that you must understand. And you can also copy all of these videos and give them out. You can serve the Lord in everything I do. It is only the word of God that I give out. It is nothing about me. Mrs. Davis, don't get anything from this, but helping every person know Christ. Then, look what he says in John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye shall be also. This is amazing. Look at this. Matchings that you never had to pay for one, one, one penny for this place he has prepared for you. Streets are pure gold. And that don't mean a thing. But just being there where there's no pain, no sorrow. All of us in perfect unity. And now, the greatest Bible verse of all of these is John 14, verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me and the works that I do, this is for you today. The works that I do. Do you believe in everything that he has done? Listen what he says. Greater works, though, shall they do do because I go to the Father. Greater work shall you do if you obey all these truths that I have given you today. This is the most amazing story in the world. And this is the only story to know Christ is life's highest attainment. You don't need anything else. And then he will supply every need. But it has to be from this book. And he says, in John chapter 14, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, 
he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved on my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. You see, it shows us the Trinity all working, and his Father, he's truly the Son of God, he's deity. No one is to be worshipped but God, but deity, not man. And then in verse 23, Jesus answered and said unto them, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. You see, once you be receive Christ, you have to be different. You can't live like the world. The world is, is so evil today. It is breaking my heart. But I have told the Lord I want to do more for him than ever because Christ is the light of the world. And here we see this. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You see, we must follow this light. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Who's in darkness? Every person that hasn't received the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. This is little Acts 26, 18. Paul said he came. See, everyone is in darkness. But he came to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of of Satan unto God. This is the light of the world. This is Acts 26, 18. And then it shows us our inheritance because that's what all of this leads up to. This great inheritance that we have been studying. All of these are for us. Then we see his death and resurrection begins the dispensation of the grace of God. What is the grace of God? For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Under grace, God freely gives the believer, which we've already seen, the believer sinner, sinner, because for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, God forgives the believing sinner. Now, remember, I want you to know after you become a child of God, you're not a sinner anymore. You're a saint of God. You cannot say, I'm a sinner saved by grace. You're not a sinner. If you can't get any further than that, then you're never going to be saved. I am a saint of God. And then he says, he gives us eternal life eternal life. The righteousness, this is now, accounts to us a perfect righteousness. And I have to read that to you because this is so important. And I didn't intend to, but I'm going to because I want you to understand Romans 3, 22 through 24. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all, and upon all that believe, for there is no difference. There's no such thing as races. There's no such thing as any person being anything else but a child of God or either lost. That's the only two people in the world. Every person is the same in God's sight. We are all of one blood. No matter who it is, no matter what they look like, God knows their heart. And he's the only one that matters because we're all going to bow before him. We are to love those that are lost. Why am I giving this out? Because I love you. God loves you and I love you. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. All of this is his word. And we are to live it according to what he says. And then we come to Romans 4, 4. 
This, I have to bring it all out because it's all here. Now to him that worketh is the reward, not reckoned of grace, but of death. Of debt. You are a slave to sin until you accept the Lord Jesus Christ. It's amazing because uh, people talk about being slaves. There's no such thing in God's word because you're a slave to sin. You're in bondage. Israel was in bondage to Egypt for 400 years. They were in bondage. God delivered them out of bondage. After they were delivered, they had unbelief in what God was telling them they needed. They did not go into the promised land. God had to keep them in the wilderness for 40 years because of their unbelief. And if you don't believe this book, here's what is going to happen to you. He kept them in the wilderness and they grieved him in his heart. And let me tell you what you're doing if you don't accept this book. He says in Hebrews 3, take heed, Hebrews 3, 12, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Their unbelief, they went into the promised land that God had given to them and they came back and said they couldn't go in because of the giants. Because of that unbelief, they were in the wilderness one year for every day they disobeyed. That was prolonged because of unbelief. You cannot live in unbelief against someone that is holy and righteous and cannot even look upon sin. That's why he died for you and for me. This message is for the last, last days because it's going to be too late soon for you to receive this gift. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, I thank thee for this message that thou hast given to this world. We're rejoicing in thee today at all of thy exceeding great and precious promises that are ours. I pray for 100 fold. So every person today that has not understood what this means, that the Spirit of God will reveal that to them and they will call upon thee and begin today to serve thee and to honor thee by praying for me and by giving out these truths that thou hast given me through the power of the Spirit of God. And it is not me that liveth, but it's Christ that liveth in me and the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Thank thee for hearing this prayer today, and thank thee for victory. In Christ's name I pray, amen. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against his truth. The gates of hell. And now I must give the Trinity to you again. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is the final name of the one true God, Elohim. That is that we have seen the truth of God's word and this Elohim, the Trinity, is in the Bible 2,500 times. And they all work together. Now listen to this, that God is one, John 17, three. This is life eternal that we may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. So this affirms, three affirms equality. That's what we're all equal. And one, oneness in everything in this book. There is no division in this book. There's no division in the body of believers. This is the oneness of substance, unity. The Spirit of God unites us into one body. The blood unites us into one body. It is the blood. This is the only way that anyone can ever get to heaven is through what Christ has done. And I am going to start to read these to you 
because these are different messages that the Lord has given to me. And I want you to understand that there are 256 New Testament names given to our Lord. Geology, the rock of ages. Theology, the son of the living God. Zoology, or zoology, the lamb of God, the lion of the tribe of Judah, and our doctor, our great physician. He can heal any disease. It's all by your faith in him. Biology, he created all life. He's a source of all life. He created all things. Carpenter, he's building his church today. Today, you're going to receive the gift of eternal life. That's the body of believers. And botany, he's the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley. Astronomy, the bright and morning star. This is the word of God. Through the word, he reveals the light of heaven to the world. That's what you have heard today. And he says in Revelation 22, 9, keep the sayings of this book, the living word. His word is heavenly grace. And he says in Psalm 16, 11, thou will show me the path of life. That's what you've received today, eternal life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are treasures forevermore. Everything on this earth is going to be burned up. It has nothing to offer. Read Ecclesiastes. It is all vanity and vexation of spirit. Receive the gift of eternal life and live this abundant life and serve the Lord. Bring your friends in one by one to the place of way up to the